If you fish rivers for walleye a lot, you probably use a lot of these, or these, or these. And if you don't, you probably should. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what I do to save money, to lose less lures, and hopefully catch a few more fish. If you go into the walleye section, so to speak, of any tackle shop, you'll, you'll see a lot of jig heads like this. Basically round eye, thin, usually brass, hook. I don't really use those at all. So my first advice, and really one of the more obvious ones, is to buy your jig heads in bulk. I started buying a few years ago a 100 size pack of saltwater style jig heads like this. First time I did it, it was 30 bucks for 100, so 30 cents a jig head, and that lasted years and years until I had to buy another 100, and by then it had been so long that inflation meant that they are now $50. But still, I won't have to buy any more for a number of years. H&H &H Tackle was just a brand that I happened to find online that had them in such quantity. Different companies make an extremely similar style hook. I'm sure they're mass produced in China somewhere. But they come very sharp and they have a much more stout hook than what you'll typically see in a freshwater tackle shop. I like that because I feel more confident when I hook into a really big walleye or sometimes a bycatch like a muskie or a big hard fighting smallmouth or some other species that you might run into, which, you know, I'm not fishing a walleye tournament. I want to catch that fish too. So you have a, a big barb, a stout hook, very sharp. And you might wonder, well, is it as easy to hook the fish if you get a light bite or something when you don't have a, a skinny hook, which I have never found that to be the case, but that brings me to my next piece of advice, which is braided line. So I always use and I always try to use braided line when I'm fishing jigs for walleye, such as this, usually 15 to 20 pound braided line. And there's two reasons for that. One, it makes it much, much easier to feel a bite. It's more sensitive because it has no stretch. Monofilament line obviously has a lot more stretch. Fluorocarbon, they say it doesn't stretch. It does stretch and you can feel the difference because it will muffle what you feel as the angler when you're fishing, if you're using even fluorocarbon, which is uh, less stretchy than monofilament, but still it, it muffles what you feel. And a lot of times, especially in rivers with current rocks, you wanna be able to tell the difference between bottom, random stuff, weeds, this, and an actual bite. And braided line is extremely easy to do that. Walleye bites, they can be very subtle, but with braided line, they're very distinct. It feels, it kind of reminds me of what it looks like when a chicken eats something off the ground, kind of a pluck. And that's so perceptible with braided line. I just love using it. And then you, you feel that pluck and you set the hook and it's very effective. And you get a better hook set with that lack of stretch. Even if you have some slack in your line, maybe there's some current that's causing a bow. Use that braided line. You end up hooking a fish that you might not otherwise. The disadvantage of braided line is that it is visible, so a lot of times I'll use a fluorocarbon leader and I'll just tie a line to line knot. knot. I'll use a Slim Beauty knot if it's a thicker line, like 30 pound fluorocarbon, and if it's thinner, like 15 or eight, I'll use an Albright knot. I'm not gonna do a knot tutorial video. There's plenty of those that you can find on how to tie a knot, but I, what I will say is this. You'll see videos out there where they're comparing different knots, so-called scientifically, they're comparing the brake strength. But what I'll say is, if there's a guide out there, a fishing guide or a professional angler that's using a knot, that's relying on a knot, it's probably a good enough knot. What makes the difference is, are you good at tying it? For example, I've had people say that an improved clinch knot is not a good knot for musky fishing, but I tie an improved clinch knot and I always have, and I've had on a really bad snag, everything from the hooks, the split rings, crimps, or barrel swivels failing before that knot does. So my advice to what your line to line knot should be is just get good at one. Get comfortable with a knot that you are doing a really good job of tying. And that's a lot of times gonna make more of a difference than changing knots. The second thing that's good about braided line is a lot of times when you do snag, because that's when you're losing the majority of baits is on snags. A lot of times with that stronger line, you could actually get your bait back. Once your normal techniques of trying to get a snag off, such as bouncing the rod or bending the rod and then immediately releasing it with slack line. If those fail, a lot of times, then you're left with just pulling as hard as you can straight back with the rod pointed at the snag. When you're doing that with stronger line like this, 
15 to 20 pound braid, a lot of times you'll still get your bait back. One of two things may happen. If it's hooked into a reed, some kind of vegetation down there, or a stick or something, you'll break that stick or pull that reed out from under the ground before you lose your bait. And if even if that doesn't happen, if it's a different type of snag, a lot of times you'll bend this hook out. And these stouter hooks that I use, you'll be able to bend them back into place a few times before they fail. So you end up losing less baits for that reason. So my final piece of advice, and this is a big one, if you're catching a lot of fish on a particular day, your issue might not be losing baits to snags, but actually having to replace your soft plastic again and again. Because when you thread these things on here, you know, see the, these kind of mass produced ones, they don't even have a real big barb here. After a few fish, this, this starts to weaken, it starts to get pulled back, and it's only gonna last, you know, a handful of fish before it's not gonna stay on that hook anymore. An amazing piece of advice that I, I would highly, highly recommend is to always use super glue. You can buy any brand you want, but make sure it has this kind of design with a screw cap on it. Any other sort of super glue packaging you'll see, I haven't found to be as reusable as these ones with the screw cap on. Fits right in your tackle box, and if you put this on tight, you'll be able to use this again and again until it runs out. And when you're on fish, and you super glue a bait on like this and you let it dry, you can catch 30, 40 fish before it comes out. I've had the soft plastic get totally chewed down to the bare lead of the jig head and it's still holding on there because that super glue is adhering so well. So you basically don't have to replace the soft plastic until you want to change colors. The other thing is a lot of times when, if that bait is not super glued and it's pulling down from a fish's hit, that'll actually mess up your hook set. If this thing gets pulled down and it's all like this, it'll a lot of times muffle your ability to set the hook, it'll get in the way, and you won't hook that fish, whereas if it was stuck on here with super glue, that hook stays exposed even after a sudden strike. There's one quick detail I wanna add. Most of the time I'm using nothing particularly fancy. I really like these Sea Shad Assassin swim baits, but what a lot of people use or slightly higher end, fancier swim baits, such as this Kitech Easy Shiner, and a lot of other brands like that that have a very, very oily bait. The plastic is very soft, and it's nice because it has action, even at extremely slow retrieves, but it will not adhere to the super glue as well. Your lower end products, such as, you know, Mr. Twister Grubs, for example, or these Bass Assassin, Swim baits I mentioned, they have a more conventional soft plastic. It's not as oily and sticks to that super glue extremely well. But oily baits with a lot of additives in there, they do not stick as well. You're not gonna get 30, 40 fish before they start to come off, even with super glue. So keep that in mind. I don't have a solution for that, but I have found that it doesn't really seem to matter. You don't need to buy those fancier swim baits. I think that's more, uh, that's more about the angler thinking that that tail kicking back and forth is really important. I've had fishing in cold water where I know I'm not reeling it fast enough to see that tail really kick, at least with my eyes, and yet fish are slamming it. So I think the minnow profile and subtle action that maybe you don't see is just as important. You might as well use a cheaper product that, that sticks really, really well to that super glue. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This is my first time doing any kind of tackle advice video, mainly because I haven't been catching too many fish lately. It's February. So wanted to put out a different type of content. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and I hope that can help you in your fishing. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one.